Advanced Hero Quest, The Jail of the Usurper, Part 3. The stench of greenskin blood hung in the air. Sven Hammerhelm coughed to try and clear out the smell from his nostrils. It did no good. He wiped the rivulets of sweat that were leaking from under his helmet and dripping from his brow. It did not stem the flow. He drew his gloved hand through his beard to try and untangle its knots. He could not. And instead, found the leather stained with the bloody innards of orcs and goblins. He curled up his lips as his good old dwarven distaste for the greenskins got the better of him. The longer he spent here, the more corrupted he felt. He straightened his back, shook his head, and buried the feeling, wrapping his fist around the handle of his hammer once more. Sven looked over to the other side of the long room and watched as his new ally, Lambert Lemberger, worked the hidden lever he'd found in the cupboard. He'd been impressed by the manling. He knew how to wield an axe. Not bad for an umgi, he whispered under his breath. Sven's keen ears listened to the pulleys, ratchets and chains that rattled and strained in the walls as the portcullis that had been blocking their way back in the corridor began to be drawn up. Come, Lemberger, lash that lever, let us be gone. We're far from done yet, the dwarf said to his companion. The human nodded stoically in response. With the death of the orc warchief under the barbarian's axe, a weight seemed to have been lifted from the manling. Sven envied him in that moment, but he also knew that he too would have his chance to sate his thirst for vengeance. For his father's murderer, the champion of chaos, Kronthag Hornhelm, still lurked somewhere in this dungeon. In this part of the expedition, the only members of the party were the dwarf, Sven Hammerhelm, mercenary and adventurer, and his newly freed ally, the mysterious yet powerful axeman, Lambert Lemberger. The two escapees stood beneath the raised portcullis. The air was foul. A different smell to the blood-drenched layer they had just left. This new smell was fetid, rotten, and putrefied. As the two looked at each other, Lemberger pinched his nose. But each knew they had to continue if they wanted to get the key out of this jail. The way ahead terminated in a right-hand turn that, according to the map that Sven possessed, led to a corridor of which were another two large rooms. The time for hesitation had passed. The two stoically moved to the corner, the foul stench growing with each footfall. Ahead, they found what they expected. Two doors leading off to a corridor, but also something they did not expect. Wandering monsters. A gaggle of nurglings, no less. No doubt the source of the foulness that saturated the air. Both the Games Master and Sven's player rolled off for the surprise roll, with the GM winning. He then placed his nurglings directly in front of the two heroes, which both Sven and Lemberger were fine with. The demons of Nurgle immediately threw themselves at the dwarf, Foul fangs and corrupted claws snapping and scratching at their foe, but the dwarf deftly turned each attack away with ease. 
The Nurglings were unfazed though, and having attacked, decided to run away as the second part of their attack move action, bouncing up down the corridor, coating everything they touched in rotten, filthy slime. It was now the hero's turn to act. Sven charged after his attackers as quickly as he could, slipping and sliding as he stumbled down the corridor, alas, lacking the movement to both reach them and attack. However, Lemberger, with his speed of nine, was able to fly after the scions of the plague god, his axe raised high. Disgust possessed the axeman, and he struck a mighty blow at the demons, scoring a critical and striking again, causing the pesky tower of Nurglings to topple onto the stone floor. He stamped, he sliced, he smashed his foes, and altogether inflicted a whopping seven points worth of damage on his enemies, leaving nothing but an icky mess all over the walls and flagstones. He turned to look back at Sven, too out of breath to speak, but he received an affirming nod from the old veteran. Not bad, manling, not bad at all. With the corridor clear of trouble, the two Dungeoneers moved up to the two doors, with Sven taking the wooden one on the right and Lemberger the steel one to their left. This, however, was predictably locked. Sven's door, on the other hand, wasn't, and he booted it open. It opened up into a long quest room, with a bookcase on the wall opposite, a treasure chest at the far end, and a circle of mysterious markings on the floor. We flipped one of our monster generation cards and got 16 points worth of adversaries for the two adventurers. The games master selected another base of Nurglings and a plague bearer. The smell that had plagued the corridor had been foul, but when compared to this room, it was like the gentle scent of a wild rose. A miasma of nauseating stench washed over the two. Sven curled up his nose and fought down the bile rising up in his gullet. Lemberger, though, lost it and retched up his guts. <coughs> However, they did have a piece of luck and Sven's player won the surprise roll. He placed the Nurglings, which he felt were the easier mark, next to the bookcase, within striking range, whilst he put the Plague Bearer at the far end of the room. The GM then moved both a single square towards the interlopers. Sven tarried not and stomped towards the morass of giggling, gurgling Nurglings. He swung his hammer only to slip on some fetid slime that covered the floor, causing him to fumble his attack. The giggling intensified as the entire gaggle of demons leapt upon the stricken dwarf, biting exposed skin and jabbing their dirty claws into any and every exposed place from which they could draw blood. Sven immediately felt the shadow of contagion looming over him, as the Nurgling's ability to cause disease invaded his body. This rule states, If this monster hits a hero, the hero must take a toughness test. Roll a die. If the result is lower than the hero's toughness, nothing happens. If it is equal to or higher, the hero becomes diseased. Between expeditions, a hero can visit a healer to remove the disease for 100 gold coins. If they do not, they lose one point of strength and toughness and remain diseased. Thus did Sven take a toughness test, rolling a natural 12, leading to the demonic pathogens that were coursing through his bloodstream, taking root wherever they could get a foothold. All this in spite of the fact that the physical attacks had only caused a single real wound. After such ill luck, Lemberger resolved to change the course of the fight and hurled himself at the mob of diminutive demons that were scrambling all over the prone dwarf. Lemberger crashed into the Nurglings with shield, axe and boot, 
coupled with a fury worthy of a follower of the Blood God, or a cleric of Sigmar. And rightly did some deity lay his blessing on the warrior, for Lemberger swung his axe, causing four wounds, including a pair of critical hits, allowing him to roll an additional two dice and inflicting an extra wound. Lemberger had neatly cleaved full half of the squirming beasties in his first swipe. The remainder he squelched underfoot and slammed into mulch with his buckler. The end result was that Sven was free, but it was in horror that Lemberger looked upon his ally's face. An unhealthy paleness hung upon the dwarf. Methanks, Manlin. Consider your debt to me. Settled. Uh, I'll think about the dwarf once we're out of here. But then, suddenly, to remind the pair of where they were, a breathy scream came from the plague bearer. <laughs> Lemberger instinctively moved in front of the stricken dwarf, giving him a moment to return to his feet. The plague bearer wasted not a moment and charged at Lemberger, his vile sword raised high and his horns bent low, giving him a plus one to hit. But Lemberger's superior weapon skill still meant that the eight he rolled was insufficient to bypass the warrior's defenses. Sven coughed up some green phlegm, spat it out, and then skirted around Lemberger to come at the plague bearer. Surely, here was a foe that would not dodge his hammer. He was direct with his attack, swinging in with a sidelong swipe, striking through the cloud of flies that swarmed about the demon. The plague bearer couldn't help but see the attack and moved to dodge it, exactly as Sven had hoped. And the dwarf drove the rim of his magical shield on his other arm right into the demon's head. Such a powerful blow from an ensorcelled weapon no less had a devastating effect on the foot soldier of the plague god, inflicting Three wounds, exactly enough to kill it outright, and the warp-spawned entity exploded out of existence. However, it did leave something behind. Necrotic slime, which Sven, recognizing its worth, recovered. You never knew when such a powerful poison would be useful. But it was now time for a bit of his own poison, and he drank one of the bottles of liquor he'd found while still with Heinrich and his allies to return him to full health. Unfortunately, it did nothing to help his uh, diseased condition, but at least it made it more bearable. And with booze in his belly... Sven made straight for the chest at the far end of the room. To discover what it contained, we rolled on the magical treasure table. First, getting a 9, which meant it was either a magical shield or helm, followed by a 10, meaning it was a magical helm, giving Sven a plus 1 toughness. He coughed up more phlegm, but couldn't suppress his smile as he beheld his new, shining, magical helmet. Meanwhile, Lemberger investigated the bookcase, but unfortunately found nothing apart from a small copper key that the barbarian had a feeling opened up the locked door on the opposite side of the corridor. It was time to find out. Run, Thoghorn, Helm. 
I'm coming for you. Unfortunately, none of the demons that they had killed had had any coin. Thus, the total that the two possessed remained at 400 gold coins. And so, the way ahead was clear. But Sven had no doubt that Kronthag Hornhelm stood between them and the key out of this jail. Again, Sven smiled before hawking up more phlegm and spitting. <laughs>